John F. Kennedy is really interesting on the Vietnam story. He had a better understanding than probably anybody else at the top level of American decision making about the obstacles that stood in the way of any kind of success in Vietnam. Because what he says is in effect any Western power that seeks to defeat this revolution by military means is destined to lose. But there's a paradox because that same Kennedy expands American involvement substantially. We were hoping that the United States would stay and defend Vietnam, but of course in the back of our minds there was always a fear that it, it might not stick around, you know, like the French. But Kennedy certainly reassured us that that was not going to happen. And of course in Vietnam he was beginning to up the ante he was sending more uh, equipment, more arms, more advisors. To children, to us, we just like, oh, you see the ghost, right? You see the alien coming from other planet. To me, I just stood there because I couldn't run. You know, where would you run? They're making so much noise and the wind. The Viet Cong had taken control of substantial portions of the, the South Vietnamese countryside by, by 1961. And it was clear that Zam's government was really back on its heels. As the children, we never used the word Viet Cong. The Viet Cong is somebody we call uncles, auntie, and we call them liberation troops. Liberation troops grow in the village with us from Viet Minh at first, Viet Minh who fought against the French. President Ziem, he and his, his family ruled the country at their whims, really. They were authoritarian. They suppressed any opposition. People like my teachers and many other leaders in the village it started to be disappear. So people like my family and myself, we had to get ready for the war. After the French Indochina War, there was a period of time in which the faction that was in control in Hanoi wanted to focus on rebuilding their country. The insurgents, the revolutionaries in the South, couldn't wait for Hanoi, for Party Center, to give them the green light to take up arms. I mean, they were being decimated as a result of Ngo Dinh Diem's policies. My family was dissatisfied with Ziem from the beginning, the dissatisfaction grew when he began to crack down on the Buddhists. A lot of people who were unhappy with Ziem, the, the people, the students, kind of rallied behind the Buddhists for their own reason. So the Buddhists became like the spear carriers for this movement to depose Ziem. So of course Ziem and his family cracked down really hard and a monk burned himself in protest. The, the Buddhist crisis was the um, beginning of the end for Ziem and his family. As the summer months go by in 1963, American officials both in Washington and in Saigon become increasingly distraught. They basically say to one another, we're not going to win this thing with Ziem in power. I don't think that uh, unless a greater effort is made by the government to win popular support that, that the war can be won out there. In the final analysis, it's their war. They're the ones who have to win it or lose it. The Hillsman Cable was a secret telegram that was drafted on August 24th, 1963. It was drafted mainly by the Undersecretary for East Asian Affairs, Roger Hillsman, with the help of some other State Department officials. And it was sent specifically to the newly arrived ambassador in South Vietnam, Henry Cabot Lodge. The telegram authorized Lodge to open communications with commanders of the South Vietnamese army, who at that time were known to be plotting a coup against Ngo Dinh Diem. I went to see Diem and he asked me, he said, do you think there's going to be a coup? And I didn't feel like I could lie to him. And I didn't know the details, but I knew that it was certainly in the air. I said it was, it was possible. On the day of the coup, he chooses to tell Lodge that I will accept President Kennedy's recommendations. Basically, he's saying he'll do whatever we want. But it came too late. 
So the coup against the Ziem government began in the early afternoon of November 1st, 1963. Ziem made the decision to place a phone call to the U.S. Embassy to speak to the American ambassador. Lodge pretended not to know what was going on. He also suggested that perhaps the time had come for Ziem to leave the country. Ziem refused to do this, and, and he responded instead by saying that he had always done what duty and good sense require, and that he believes in duty above all else. After the coup, I went to the palace with a friend, and we went to the sitting room where we had sat, and there was the sofa that I had sat on, and it was riddled with bullet holes.